Hey guys, welcome back to another big patch. 2.10 is hitting, well, today. So um, I thought it's time to make a short video about this. Um, it features, well, new features, accessibility, quality of life improvements. So overall, some stuff that helps new players. And overall, also some balance changes, mostly to Forsaken, to, well, to nerve it a little bit. Just, that's just... It's not a big um, a big secret, but Forsaken is probably being overused a little bit. So yeah, there's going to be some interesting changes in this one. But before we start, the season one ends. It ends today at noon PST. That should be 8 p.m. European time, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's 9 p.m. We will see. Um, so rating changes will temporarily turn off. You will gain season reward batches and the ratings will be soft resets. I don't know how soft reset that will be, like how close you will get to 1200, but it's everything is gonna be a little bit more, um, yeah, closer. And then the announcement about the big sale and the marketing push. I thought it would be today on the 9th April, but um, yeah, apparently it's on the 19th April, but on April 19th, Oh God, I can't speak that, holy shit. Legion T2 will be 50% off and featured on the front page of Steam for one day. If you have a friend who's on the fence about the game, now's the chance for him to play. We're also working with some big influencers to help promote the game around this time. Yes, there will be some influencers that play this game and I already know a little bit about that, but yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm, it's gonna be good. Um, yeah, I look forward to this. Okay then. 2v2 continues. I know a lot of people, like before I even start this, a lot of people have criticism and we will see how that plays out. For now, the game will continue as 2v2. There is still the option to have 4v4 um, as a second queue if the marketing push is successful. So after a lot of evaluation, we're excited to keep 2v2 as primary game mode for Legion 2v2. Um, that is a big change that may upset some of you. and. The most people that are upset about this are also commenta commenting this and yeah, well, and we hope you understand that the decision was not made lightly. 2v2 is necessary for matchmaking to work as the player base grows. We'll consider re-adding 4v4. So if the game is a success and people, well, more people are interested in playing again, then I think 4v4 wouldn't be a problem. Um, but yeah, that, that's also a matter of having people from Asia and America playing the game. Because right now, if you play it during European time, it's no problem, even 4v4 wouldn't be a problem. But during off times, it's a problem. So, yeah, this is important. Um, right now, occurring is hard at work on a new and improved 2v2 map, which we plan to release this month. This, that all sounds good this month already, a uh, new 2v2 map. I mean, playing on the old 4v4 map seems seems kind of wrong because it's a 4v4 map and having a 2v2 on that is, yeah, weird. But now to the updates and the improvements that they were talking about. Notifications 2.0. Important game events now have their own notifications. This helps make it easier for players to know what's going on in the game. Pings when you clear or leak. Pings when you or the other team leaks the king. A variety of other notifications not listed here and fix a variety of inconsistencies with notifications, messages, and sounds. So basically just improving the old notifications and it, it looks a little bit better now. Um, before it was just part of the text chat and it didn't really belong there. So now having it as notifications is probably better. And the next new feature, event history. Viewer history of important events on the scoreboard. So since the scoreboard is kind of it's not really filled right now since we have only uh two players now on the team that you have to spectate um there's place for the for an event history I, i'm guessing you can scroll through that and see like everything even like super old stuff and um yeah i think in general this helps make things a little bit uh, clearer also you, you can see what kind of units you've been sent so if it was a fiend or double snail Next feature, mini scoreboard. Added a mini scoreboard that displays your team's value workers and mercenaries for this wave. No, you don't have to spam tab as often. So basically just giving some of the information that you usually look up in tab on, like that you have that without pressing tab. So for example, 
your value and the workers, which is useful information that you otherwise you always look it up. And now my favorite feature for this patch, the recommended fighter system. Highlights recommended fighters based on damage defense types, shows a bar that turns green if you're near recommended value and yellow or red if you're not, recommends whether you should build or not based on recommended value. You can also disable this in the options if you prefer. And um, yeah, it also fixes a bug where, you, where the recommended value wouldn't update properly. I'm not sure if that's really fixed, like we will have to see that first. But um, yeah, the system is primarily meant for new players and should be used as a guideline. You should not entirely rely on it making decisions for you. But this is definitely helping because you don't always have to look up everything and kind of makes things easier to see on which wave these units are good and on which are not. Um, you can see that in a picture here that, for example, the Berserker gets highlighted. I don't know which wave this is for, but uh, it's probably 10, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, in, in general, those fighters have like a score, um, depending on their attack and armor. And also ranged units um, rely more on their damage, of course, and the melee units rely more on their armor. So this is also taken into account. And this is probably gonna make things easier. And you can see a bar below the fighters and that's basically just showing you like how close you are to recommended value and yeah, that you should build more or not, but you're not forced to do that. And you can also just disable this if you don't, if you don't like it. Uh, but yeah, in general, I think this is gonna help a lot of new players. Further improvements for the King HP bars, which are now always green for your team and red for the enemy team. It was, it was weird sometimes, especially if you were on the, on the red side and your King bar is like red. Yeah, it's, it's better now because it's always green for yours. Um, now show, also shows the wave icon and um, yeah, some improved king cool tooltips. Um, and then to fighters and mercenaries, they are now grayed out if you can't afford them. I like that as well. And you can now use the up and down arrows on the post game builds to navigate between waves. I would still like to see the values there. I think that's not added yet. I should probably make a feature request, but whatever. <laughs> More updates also to graphics and sound updates. What I really like here is the wave sounds. So now when you receive at least one 240 plus Mythian mercenary, the sound of the most expensive mercenary will play. So basically as if you um, selected it or like send it, you will also have that sound. So you instantly see, okay, which one is the strongest mercenary that the enemy sent me. So you can easily, uh, more easy like scout units which isn't too hard, but it's it's a small gimmick, it's okay. Next thing, matchmaking updates. Um, first, a note that if you have the bug of the infinite matchmaking queue and you are not like high or super low elo, then you should, or, or well, in general, also if you're high or low elo, because at some point you should find a match, then you should ping Linsk in Discord. I guess this uh, this is an exception, but if you have that bug, you can, you can do that. But it probably only makes most sense if you, uh, if he's online. I don't know. Maybe maybe he can also see that. Like he just wants to see in general if that still happens. So if that bug still occurs, and then for new players also, uh, players are considered new if they have fewer than ten games. Before it was twenty, so this prevents new players from dropping too low too quickly. So if someone is new and he loses his first, let's say twenty games, then he's on really low elo. So yeah, this this prevents us a little bit. But um, in general, there will then there are more things needed that new players are not even discouraged that easily. So there's going to be more more things in the future to to uh, help with that. And in dual queue, the rating penalty is also lowered slightly now. Game updates. First, they fixed the bug with the pets so that chaos sound or like other pets were simply not warping when the wave was cleared. They didn't want to just do a hotfix patch for, for this small issue, so it's in this patch. And um, yeah, then then a bug with bots, because bots apparently couldn't use Atlantean towers yet. So that's that's better now if they fake mastermind. And the bots are no longer restricted to, well, building only one honey flower they've kept. This is still from very old days. So bots were just simply not changed till then. and. Now probably someone was like, oh wait, there there's, is something. Like the bot always builds one death cap, one honey floor, but doesn't build more. So yeah, this is basically fixed now as well. Very small balance changes to legion spells. Giant snail now multiplies only with 2.4 times. 
a slight nerf, but it was overused a lot. Well, yeah, as long as you had it to, to choose, it was pretty strong actually to send on 11, 12, 15. Like, and it was really good on almost every wave, so it's it gets nerfed a little bit. Militia is being buffed a little bit, which I don't really understand too much. I think Militia already had its, um, its own niche somewhere. So, well, okay. And now the change that probably makes the biggest difference for this patch, economy. There's no more gold in the ecosystem. You're asking yourself why? Because you now start with two workers. So you start with the same Mythium rate as before the 2.0 patch. But since you can have these 50 workers, these 50 gold workers, it's it's going to be way harder now, again, to, to hold against sense and everything. Like Because in general, people will have way more workers again early, way more, in my opinion, really way more. And you have to be scared of a, of a 40 cent on two again, of maybe 80 cent on three and all these things 120 on four i don't know like everything is possible so you got to be even more careful now but in general that if people continue income sending a lot early you're gonna have way more workers than before league bounty has also changed a bit because it was a little bit too snowbally early on so now the leaker gets a little bit more gold back and the enemy team also gets a little bit more gold but here we see an example of how much the difference is because if you just say, okay, it's increased, it's it's increased moderately, it's increased slightly, you don't know. So if you leak two Rockos, you get 15 gold back now instead of 11, and the enemy team gets 27 instead of 25, which is still a lot. Like I think actually making people leak is totally worth it. And if you do that early, you're still gonna be behind. It's it's You're a little bit less behind now because you don't lose that much gold. But um, in general, some interesting changes. I'm not sure if it was really necessary to give the enemy team even more gold, but we will see. King is also getting further adjustments. So now for using the judgment spell, he only needs five mana. His uh, giant slayer ability now works with current health, 20% current health. So in general, like if there's a big unit like the mini boss on five or on 15, then it deals a lot of damage on your first hit, but less and less on the other hits. But in general, a big buff. And um, also the health is scaling a little bit different. It starts with a little bit less and ends with a little bit more. Uh, same with the damage. Not a lot of, like, not, not really big changes. Maybe there are some changes, especially with the Judgment spell on, like, 12 or 16, that I can't see from just the numbers right now. I can't really see, because we don't, we don't see the numbers. Uh, it's basically just scaled from wave 1 to 21. Um, but yeah, about even in power early games, stronger late game and against big, big leagues. So maybe we have we will have some games that go that go a little bit further again. Like we, we will probably have some level 20 and level 21 games again. And to start off the balance changes, we start with Mastermind getting even more income now. Now you start with three income as Mastermind. I still th don't think that th this really solves the problem of Mastermind in general. But I think it will encourage more people to pick Mastermind because three income is like until wave 10, you get plus 27 gold, which is honestly really not bad. And with Mastermind, you even have the chance of getting a pretty OP combo that you might not get otherwise. But still picking Legion is kind of safe. But yeah, I think Mastermind can totally work, work out um, depending on what units you play and how the game in general works out. Let's start the unit changes with Atlantean. So Sea Serpent, Deep Coiler, well, it's not really a buff or nerve or anything, but they just take five seconds now um, for unburring instead of 4.5. And they recommend positioning Sea Serpent, Deep Coiler six to seven squares ahead of your frontline tank. The question is, is a square like, like is one unit one square big or is a unit two by two squares? So six to seven squares is that three and a half lines or is that six to seven lines? Like, I don't know exactly what I mean by squares, but I could imagine that I mean the, the really short ones. Um, that means I would already build them too far in front. I don't know. We will find out, I guess. But I guess everyone has to find out themselves how to place these Atlantean units. You thought only Forsaken gets nerfed? Nope. Element also gets nerfed. Filamental two damage down, Violet two damage down, because those were both basically the strongest units for Element right now. It's still playable. I'm I'm pre pretty sure it's still playable, 
just not as strong as before. But um, yeah, interesting changes. And there's the big Forsaken nerf that I told you about. So Gate Guard loses 30 health, Harbinger loses 100 health, and that makes a difference, honestly, because that's just 100 health on a Harbinger where he could resummon a pet or he can't, and 100 health is 100 health. Nightmare Doppelganger both get a bonus, get bonus HP, 50 HP for Nightmare and 300 for Doppelganger, but they get their attack speed reduced. So basically now it's less less dependent on um, on the acro in, in general for Nightmare Doppelganger. And Doppelganger with 3300 HP is way more likely actually to, to make it to mid. So this is not really a big nerf for Doppelganger. Um, actually pretty interesting. I, I think if I get Doppelganger on my on my role in, in Mastermind and I get a Butcher as well, I'm probably going to play it. I think uh, the 300 HP are definitely going to help. So even if you are un you are unlucky, you you still basically come out ahead because you just have so much more HP than before, and also imp damage is getting decreased. But well, not that many people are building Hades anyway. You build like maybe one or two Hades if if it if the game goes to late game, so this is not going to affect it too much. But yeah, mostly Gatecard and Harping are big nerfs, and if they are nerfs, they also have to be buffs, right? So. In addition to the nerfs to Element of Forsaken, which already buffs the other legions automatically, Grove is also getting some buffs. So Valshroom now has 1400 HP, which means 700 start, and Canopy has 3800, which means 1900 start. These units are just getting stronger and stronger. I don't think they are weak. If they stay alive long enough, and now they, I don't know how long they exactly they have to stay alive now, but probably only 20 seconds of 30, they're already better than before. So. And with with like Head Chef or Butcher even stronger. I think these units are definitely underestimated right now and you can definitely use them. I'm probably gonna play a lot more Grove, but also probably gonna use Valshium way more in my um in my roles in Mastermind. Um additionally also Banana Bank gets 20 more HP and one more damage. Also Meg is getting some buffs. Not really sure if that's necessary, but Millennium gets some more damage, Doomsday gets some more damage, and Doomsday also gets more health. I, I think in general Doomsday was not in a bad spot at all. A very powerful unit that is mostly used late game where it doesn't overkill that much. And I'm not sure if this was ne really necessary because you can make sure that they get the APS aura if you have the uh, if you have it in the Mastermind role with Head Chef, they get a lot of healing. They seriously get so much healing from, from this. It's crazy. Um, so probably dupes they can like tank 14 alone with a Head Chef. I, I don't know, like I, I could imagine it. It's it's crazy. And um, not sure if it was really necessary, but anyway. And finally, some changes to mercenaries and waves. So tank mercenaries now spawn a bit earlier, so even earlier than before. So you will definitely focus that Ghost Knight now, or that Dino, or Snail, or whatever. And uh, ranged DPS and Aura Mercenaries now spawn a bit later. Just, well, I guess in general to, to save the Auras a little bit longer, so the Auras don't die that early. Um, I see it a lot that Pack Leader is being sent again on 15, which, well, it's not that bad, because Pack Leader actually really survives for quite a, some time. Um, but in general, I, I like this. Uh, it makes it less likely that the Auras get sniped, which is in general, not that easy anyway, because safety mode and pack leader got pretty good HP. But uh, yeah, anyway, interesting. Then a big change to wave 10, which is getting nerfed. Um, also, you get 100 gold back now for leaking it instead of 80. But also to compensate with that and to make 10 still a wave where you want to send, the enemy team also gets 70 instead of 60 gold. So kind of like the change in general to, to bounty early on. They uh, also do it on 10. And well, 10 also gets nerfed a little bit. Um, attack speed nerfed by 0 0.05 attacks per second makes a difference. Can really make a difference, guys. And um, then some changes to 18, which gets buffed, 19 gets buffed, and 20 gets buffed. They they probably already think of that people um, will have a lot more income. That's, that's why they do it like this. So, yeah, I like it. All right, so that was the patch overall. Well, what can I say? I'm really happy about the, the nerf to Forsaken Element. Um, the change with the economy that you now start with two workers is... Well, it, it doesn't really look that good. I mean, it will feel good because you, you start with more, more Riffium 
rate, like in general, it will feel better because you can send harder early on. But it just doesn't look that good if you start a game with two workers. Like usually, if, if you if you start with one worker, it's just it's just one worker, and then everyone starts from one. Starting from two is just kind of unnatural. I think starting from like five would be something something cool as well, but that would be a completely different balance anyway. So overall, interesting changes to be too continuous, even though so many people are against it. We will see how that works out in the end. Um, I, I don't know, like right now, I like 2v2 from a competitive perspective, but now a lot of people don't like it because it's less fun and because they want to play with friends. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, but for now, for now, the, the best thing we can do is give them constructive feedback instead of just saying, oh, this is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Give them feedback and say why you don't like certain things and why they should do certain things different and what in general they can do to attract new players and to make people stay with the game and keep playing. So um, yeah, that's it for this patch. Thank you very much for watch watching or listening or wh whatever you, you did with this patch notes video and um, hopefully see you again very soon. Bye-bye.